Hello and welcome to Weird Around Illinois. Today we're going to talk about an old friend of ours, Dogman, and we're going to change our perspective a little bit. We always talk about seeing Dogman, finding Dogman, but we never really talked about what happens when he sees us. So let's talk about it and let's get weird. If we're talking about Dogman seeing us, I guess the first thing we need to sort out is how he sees physically. Yeah, yeah, there are, there are a variety of ways you can assume Dogman sees things. I mean, when you look at the name, it's dog or man. So starting with the human side, which is man, um, I mean, you would assume that to a degree he'd, look, he'd see things as a human, whether it be with color, it might be the same kind of shapes that we see anyway. Mm -hmm. um, then with dog, uh, it, it could be black and white. We don't know exactly, but... Um, yeah, I, the other thing is humans and dogs both have forward-facing eyes, so we know that he's got depth perception. Yeah. I think it's probably, well, I won't say it's safe to assume, but I think it is generally assumed that he has better vision than humans. Yeah, I mean, he's a super, superhuman to a degree, so, yeah. So, do you think that supernatural power extends to his vision? Do you think he could have vision abilities even beyond a human or a dog or a wolf? It's possible. I mean, what what if it could see through a tree? That would explain why they could hide so well, possibly behind trees, where people just can't see them. Yeah, so x-ray. Mm -hmm. Or possibly he has, like, night vision. Uh, like a bat or something? Yeah, yeah, like a bat or, or uh, like, even human-modified night vision, like we, we get through our night vision cameras and stuff, where they used to call it a starlight scope, where you could look and suddenly everything around you is bright as day, even in the middle of the night. Yeah, or it, you can see thermal, which is exactly what the predator sees. <laughs> right. I mean, I think it has depth perception as well, mm -hmm. but it's all thermal and, you know, the different red, orange, and blue. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything's off the table when we talk about his ability to see, because it, it does seem like he has a consistent advantage over humans, at least, and, and perhaps over other animals as well. And uh, enhanced vision would certainly certainly be that advantage or could be part of that advantage. Yeah, and they do have glowing eyes, which would kind of match what nocturnal animals have. Mm -hmm. And we've talked a little bit about dogmen using portals, and it makes me wonder if he is using portals, can he see through the portal before he jumps through it? You know, does his vision actually allow him to pick the spot where he wants to come out where there's nobody around? So he can see through different dimensions. Right. I don't know. In a way, I wonder if Dogman were to be able to do it, I'd wonder if there'd be a lot more sightings. <laughs> because maybe Dogman just pops up wherever he wants, mm -hmm. and sometimes just happens to be where humans are. Mm -hmm. Maybe that could explain why we don't see hear about sightings like all the time. Mm -hmm. Still in a reasonable amount. Yeah, yeah, and the, the converse is also, is also true to that. It, it could explain why we have sightings at all. I mean, if Dogman had that ability to, to see through portals and he wanted to avoid humans completely, he could just always materialize in the middle of the woods with no humans around. True. Well, speaking of humans, how do you think Dogman views humans? I mean, what is his first thought when he sees a big old human walking out in, into his section of the woods? Well, one of the first one of the first thoughts that comes to mind is that we might give food to them. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, like in the woods, if they're just hunting for something and they see a human, that's probably a lot of food for them. <laughs> I mean, it, he's clearly above a f our food chain anyway, above us. So mm -hmm. it's it would be a safe to assume he could eat us. Yeah. 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 It's um. You know, the little Red Riding Hood thing comes to mind. My, what big <laughs> teeth you have, you know. Yeah, yeah he, he would definitely be capable of eating a human. Now, that being said, we don't have a ton of reports of that. I mean, uh, Land Between the Lakes has multiple reports. that There seems to be a very aggressive dogman living in that area that, that is attacking and partially eating people. I've seen a few other podcasts and, and YouTube videos of dogman potentially, you know, attacking, killing, and eating people. But in terms of the classified, you know, actual, actual paper, well, not paper anymore, but actual digital reports turned into the various research groups of dogman sightings, there are very few of them where there's an actual attack on a person. 
and you know we'll get into some possible reasons for that later but if dogman sees humans as food i think it's probably conditional i don't think we're a natural food source for dogman that'd be my guess anyway yeah i've only heard of stories where you know humans go missing after seeing a dogman somehow or uh mm -hmm. yeah nothing where like a someone sees a dogman literally eating a corpse of a human, so I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, and that, you, you mentioned another vital part of this, which is, you know, a lot of dogman encounters may never get recorded as dogman encounters because somebody just goes missing. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of missing people in this country every year, and uh, who's to say dogman isn't making a few of them disappear? <laughs> yeah, and some will say that, uh, like, news sources try to cover it up, saying it it was like a lion or something. Mm -hmm. Well, there's that case in, uh, was it Texas or, or Arizona? Somewhere in the southwest where the, the, the news claimed and the police claimed it was a mountain lion attack. And the wounds were on the wrong side of the neck and the claw marks were wrong. And every, every expert who looked at it said, no, this was an attack by a wolf. And there were no wolves in that region, and certainly none that could take down a six foot something man. Yeah, I know the story that you're talking about. It was a guy that uh, went missing in the middle of the forest. Like, he just randomly went traveling down there. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he went, it was like, he was walking home, but it was like a five mile walk through dense woods that he chose to take. Yeah, yeah, he could have taken the roads, but he chose to go through the forest, which hasn't been explained, I don't think, ever. No. Now, the safety tip for those of you at home, if you have a long walk home, like a five mile walk, and the shortcut is through the woods, or you can go six miles and take the roads, take the roads. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if we're not food, or if we're not food on that particular day, what might be the next thought that Dogman would have when he sees us? It's possible that Dogman could be scared of people. And I would argue that we see this in most sightings, where Dogman just like looks at people and maybe tries to intonate them, or even just leaves. Nothing happens after that. Kind of like most animals, really. Like if you if you got a mean dog, you, the the dog you know sometimes he'll bite you, but more often than not, what he'll do is he'll get, he'll give you a heavy growl, a couple barks, and then he'll trot away if you don't back off. I, I could I could definitely see based on the evidence and the reports that we have that could be a standard approach for dog man. Again, conditional on some other things. And you could probably see why we would be a threat to Dogman. I mean, in general, humans are big. Humans have technology. Humans have weapons. We've caused animals to go extinct. So certainly if, if word gets around the animal kingdom, humans are something to avoid. <laughs> so I, I would say that, you know, that's going to be the bulk of the encounters, but there could be other possible relationships with human beings. And I know, you know, I always reference uh, Bob from Michigan, the friend who we still owe a phone call to. Um, you know, he talked about almost a friendly relationship with one dog man. And, you know, and it, you know, I, I, I kind of questioned him at one point whether it was like a pet. And he said, no, I was like his pet. <laughs> and that was kind of interesting. He talked about relationships with other other dogmen in the area being quite different, you know, more like what we described, predator-prey kind of relationships, where he felt his life was in danger, you know, if he were not protected by this other one. So, you know, there are reports of humans bonding with dogmen. There are reports of dogmen following humans, stalking humans. And is that curiosity? Is that intimidation? Is that friendship? I mean, who, who knows? Who knows what's causing it? Uh, I've actually like listened to a podcast once, which it may have been an encounter from the same person, for all I know. But someone basically saw like a dog man with blue glowing eyes, mm -hmm. and they got like a friendly energy from it. Mm -hmm. That might have been the same report because he, uh, you know, Bob appeared on a couple of podcasts. I think. I do remember his dog man, the friendly dog man, had blue eyes, and the other ones did not. And we we're, at least I was trying to figure out if that might be a pattern. I don't know. Or if that indicated that maybe that dog man was once human. Another possible relationship between humans and, and dog man, though, the one that comes up frequently, is could we be directly or indirectly the creators of dog man? 
I mean, is Dogman a mutated human? Is Dogman someone who used to be human and got bitten by a werewolf or a Rougarou? Is Dogman some sort of weird genetic experiment created in a military lab by humans? And if any of those things are true, how would that affect how he looks at us? Would, would he look at us sadly, like he wishes he was still like us? Would he look at us like you poor unevolved creatures? Or would he look at us with anger like you did this to me? I don't know. I sometimes think of the possibility that they're literally just like aliens. There's a different form of alien. In that case, they might just be thinking, what are these humans doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> can't blame them for thinking that. <laughs> yeah. yeah they're just staring at us as we're like terrified and staring <laughs> them in the eye. Yeah. What are they doing? Why is it staring at me? Or, you know, they could just sit and watch the news and shake their head sadly at us at any moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think there are there are many different ways that Dogman could be reacting to humans based on based on a number of factors, and and some of those factors are environmental. Like, you know, what happens when you are in Dogman's territory, like deep woods, versus if you encounter Dogman in a parking lot or in your own backyard or uh, you know next to a dumpster next to a store. I I think. My assumption, at least, would be that Dogman is territorial. Yeah. If you're deep in a forest and, you know, there's not a lot of animals around you, not a lot of animal sounds, and it's just you and Dogman, he's probably going to, you know, attack you because you're in his territory, as you would assume. Mm -hmm. Then, it, meanwhile, if you were in a parking lot, as I think you said, um, I mean, he probably wouldn't bother to go out and attack you there, because there's probably people around, different cars parked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's also uh, cemeteries that Dogman could be defending, which would mean he might not necessarily be defending himself. Dogman might be defending, like, a burial ground or something. Right. Yeah, some sort of sacred ground that he's protecting. But, but it would still be his territory that he has to protect from us. Yes, there's a reason behind every attack, I, I'd assume. Yeah, and then he would naturally view any human as an intru intruder, a trespasser, yeah. that has to be dealt with, whether it's making them disappear or scaring them off. Yeah, so Darkman might have some logic to him, which would also add to why he might be part human. Yeah, definitely. Now... I think that the number of humans or dogmen involved would greatly affect his reaction. You know, I think if one dogman stumbles on a group of hunters, like five guys, he's probably going to just disappear. You know, whether it's through a portal or behind a tree or just slinking off into the darkness before anybody sees him. But if three or four dogmen in a pack stumble on one person walking through the woods, like that poor guy walking home, I think it's going to be a bad day for that guy. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. And perhaps the age and size of humans matters too. I mean, if it's a kid wandering through the forest, you know, unless Dogman has some affinity for children, I think he would probably feel more comfortable attacking a child than a full-grown human. So no morals, but uh, still well, logic. Well, assuming no morals. I mean, <laughs> most animals don't have morals, but if he's partially human, he might very well let the child go and attack the full-grown person. Who knows? <laughs> but, you know, again, I, you know, I'm a fairly big guy. I think if I'm walking through the woods on one side and there's somebody, you know, maybe six inches shorter and 100 pounds lighter going through the woods on the other side, he's going to attack that one. <laughs> yeah, most likely. I might be a better meal for him, but he's going to have to fight hard. <laughs> Another thing that factors into this are, are the humans armed? And does he know? I mean, we've talked before about Bigfoot and his ability to recognize weapons and how a gun will actually send Bigfoot into a rage. But I haven't really heard that about Dogman. I've only heard that bullets don't seem to affect him much. Mm. Yeah, he's almost bulletproof. But I mean, I'm sure it understands the danger in, uh, I guess, those weapons. And if somebody were to shoot that at him, he would also be enraged. Yeah. So maybe if he understands that weapons can cause pain, even if they don't kill him, 
maybe it would institute some sort of fight or flight if he saw a human with a weapon versus just a human, you know, wandering through the woods. You know, he might he might not be worried about a human just walking through the woods without a weapon if, you, if the human sees him. It might be, you know, just, just a chance to growl and go about his business. Yeah, and he, all, he might also perceive it as an act of, of an attack. Right. I was about to say war, but yeah. I don't think it would have been much of a war. No, no, probably not. Not unless there were multiple dogmen and multiple humans, and then, yeah. then it's on. <laughs> yeah. Another, you know, just kind of um, logistical thing, is there cover nearby? I mean, of course, if, you know, he's right on the edge of the woods and can disappear easily, dogman will be more likely to disappear. But if he's in the middle of a parking lot and he's got nowhere to go, he's going to be more likely to attack and try to take you out, I think because he, he might see no other way to get away. Possibly. Again, depending on the other factors. Another thing that influences it is day or night. I mean, we've been in the woods at night. You know, we could walk within three feet of a dog man and not know he's there in the dark. Um, yeah. So that, to me, gives dog man unlimited options at night. He, he could just mind his own business and let us go. He could attack. He could try to scare us. He could he could run away. He could do whatever the heck he wants at night. Yeah. Whereas during the day, he's a little more limited because there's a better chance of him being seen. There's a better chance of more humans being around. There's a better chance of things going not as well for him during the day. Yeah. And if he really is nocturnal, then Dogman might be literally looking for people and hunting them mm -hmm. at night in the woods. Yeah. And that's why it's important to have a thermal when you go out there. <laughs> Definitely. You see things a lot easier. Or a nice red light to see eye shine at least. Yeah. You know, another factor that I just kind of thought of, and we've kind of danced around it a little bit, but is Doc Man hungry? I mean, what's the food situation like? Is, does he have plenty of deer? Does he have plenty of small animals? Is he full? Or has it been a really bad winter and he hasn't found anything to eat yet and you happen to be the first warm-blooded thing to walk past him? Yeah. Sometimes we've found certain patterns where Dogman could be migrating, like around the river. Mm -hmm. If so, that could very well be a, a way of him trying to find food. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, chances are he's pretty good at it. I don't... Yeah. You know, he doesn't look like he's going hungry. Oh. <laughs> But again, it, it, wrong place at the wrong time. If you catch him when he's he, he's gone without a meal for a day or two, I think your luck is probably run out. Yeah. So, you know, based on all of this, what do you think the most likely outcome is if you run into a dog man? I think most likely dog man is just kind of gonna look at you, maybe do like a, a intimidating smile or something like they sometimes do, mm -hmm. and then just leave. <laughs> yeah, based on the timing and, I guess, season. And any of these other factors. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Either that or, I guess I would take it a step further, and I would say the most likely reaction is that as a human, we're never going to know he saw us. No. He's going to be hunkered down in the deep woods, and he's going to see us walking by, and unless one of these other factors apply. You know, unless he's hungry, unless he's threatened, unless we're walking into his sacred area, he's just gonna say, I don't even want to be bothered with those people. And that could also explain why there are so few dogman encounters. Yeah. Alright, well that's that's our take on Dogman, what he's seeing when he looks at us. If any of you have had a dogman encounter or been seen by a dogman, we would love to hear about it. And as always, we thank you for listening and thank you for subscribing. 